you know, I, I, I don't agree that it's, right. it's all m motor related. Um, there's a lot of distortion that can come from the cone, um, the suspension, what have you, but, but yeah, I, I identifying, um, identifying distortion in, in drivers is critical for network. Well, for, for design integration, you know, uh, everything distorts at some frequency typically. So um, what, and, and one of the design philosophies that is still rings in my mind whenever we work on a new design that my father said is, and it sounds kind of hippy dippy, but he says, you got to listen to the driver. And what he meant by that is don't be arrogant as a, as a loudspeaker engineer and think that you can make the driver do something that it's not going to be good at. Okay. Um, you know, that's, that's a, a lot of hubris there. I mean, there's a lot of hubris in design to begin with, right? I can do it better and therefore I'm going to do it, whatever. But no, I think you have to be very respectful and distortion is integrated in a lot of different ways, whether it's, um, whether it's in the network topology, the transducer design to begin with. But, um, but that's the, that's the art is, is trying to identify where the driver um, is going to work optimally, and if that will integrate with the other drivers, and so on and so forth, it's a very integrated, uh, multifaceted challenge. All right, cool. Another question from Razor: You're using off-the-shelf drivers. What would you change of any of the drivers if it was possible? Well, so I, I guess it depends on designs because not all of our designs are off-the-shelf drivers. But um, I will say this. Um, and, I, and I, you know, my dad started in the industry professionally. I mean, he was doing his own loudspeaker designs in 75, but, but he got a gig uh, doing transducer design. And, um, you know, so he was very passionate about it. He understood it. But later in life, you know, I mean, there's so many, there's people that spend every day doing transducer design. They are extremely skilled at it. And um, we're lucky in that, you know, uh, we've developed enough of a reputation that um, companies will send us their designs, uh, their prototypes for us to both um, look at to integrate, but also to give feedback on. And we've given numerous transducer companies feedback in the beta stage that ultimately became part of their standard off the shelf production line. Um, but ultimately we focus on, on loudspeaker design and we depend on, in my opinion, the best, we, we can be selective. We choose the best transducers by, by design model, whatever we're trying to achieve, both in performance and ultimately in cost for, for you know, because there's a parts budget to every design we do. And part of that skill set, I would say mastery, is, is, is spending that budget appropriately. And transducers are, are obviously a, a big factor in that. And um, and there's a lot of inherent costs in, in going off and designing your own transducers. And um, there's something to be said for having people that spend all their time working on it. So we're happy to incorporate them. But no, short answer is um, several of our designs, especially the entire um, VR and Ultraline incorporate proprietary drivers as well as off the shelf designs. All right, cool. So here's an interesting question. They're asking about the base section. Does the active base section work in a similar way as REL subs with the high level neutral nutric speak on input direct? So okay. basically, I guess they're trying to see if it's similar to the way REL subs are incorporated to a sound system. Is that how you uh, incorporate your subs? It's 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 similar, but distinctly different. Um, as a matter of fact, I just did a, a setup for a gentleman that had. Um, rel subs and i had the pleasure of integrating them into the front end as a, in a reinforcement mode um so you know uh and yes we were using the high level um in this case speak ons um but we were coming directly off of the um speaker output uh terminals on the base section right so um so yeah we 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 want that high level um you know we want the signature of your electronics First and foremost, across the entire frequency spectrum. Also, we want the speed. You know, um, when you, in my opinion, <laughs> when you come off of uh, the preamp, 
you're you're at a different speed than you are if you're coming directly off the amplifier it's it, it, or off the speaker binding post in this case it's fully integrated and um and and once you dial it in it's it's integrated the differences i would say between the rel and um and our our foundation amplifier subwoofer amplifiers is for one we we isolate our network um, our amplifier with um, step down transformers and why that's important is adaptability um, our our foundation plate amps in the ultra 7 or the foundation subwoofers they don't care how your um, the designer of your electronics grounded their amplifier um, so there's not going to be any type of adverse interactions with um, with our electronics and your electronics um, in addition to that, because we're isolating it, um, you can invert the phase on the inputs uh, for our foundation subs. And why that's important is, you know, RHEL has a, a, a phase switch, 0 or 180. Um, we have a rotary dial and we go from 0 to 180. So we got many settings in between those two points. And then if you invert the inputs on the foundation subs, now you can go 180 through 360. And ultimately, when you're integrating a subwoofer, especially a fast subwoofer that needs to be just as fast as those um, in your main driver, uh, your main towers, um, you want to be able to get the phase perfect so that it's it's fully integrated and matched. We also have um, frequency like they do. We have, um, uh, I'm sorry, frequency phase, amplitude, obviously. And then we have um, an LF adjust and cut that allows you to uh, to either boost or cut if needed, because some rooms will amplify certain frequencies or suck out, in which case you have to adjust for that as well. So there are some significant differences in, um, in how we approach it. And lastly, our, our foundation subs are slot ported, which gives us uh, a, just an added level of control when integrating uh, with your system. Okay, so I, yeah. there's there's some significant differences. I see that. Now, this is something that I meant to ask you while, while you were here. Can we expect a fully active speaker? Um, I, I definitely won't say no. Uh, <laughs> I know, you know you because won't. because the, here's the thing. It, it, you know, it would seem foolish for me to say no, and then you yeah, know, no, at some you, point, it, it's right for us. And yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's emerging. It's it's the emerging technology. You know, we we we. I was asked in an interview, uh, I don't know, maybe six years ago, and, I, and for some reason this is stuck in my head. You know, there was this assumption from the interviewer that it's all been done. Everything's been done. We've reached the pinnacle of loudspeaker design. And is there really much more to do? And, you know, and, and, and I'm like, you know, I, I, my perspective is completely the opposite. I